Right, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to try and turn this into discussion as much as I can, because as you can hear, my throat is suffering already. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'm one of four of the Debian account managers. Um, and when I asked who was doing this out of the four of us a few days ago, um, the answer was, well, you're the only one there, so have fun. So here we are. Um, so I'm going to recap very quickly for people who aren't involved in this process at all, um, who's who and who ends up in which bits of the process. Um, and then there is some news that we have if you're already involved in the process, because Enrico has had a burst of activity recently and rewritten everything under the world. Um, and then we can have discuss um, anything that anybody wants to bring up or that I manage to pick on people to talk about. So, um, so who is completely new to this, isn't involved at all? Give me a wave. Completely new. Completely new. You don't count. Okay, so, so a few. So, so, um, so who's in the process? We have several teams and several different groups of people who take a part in this. So um, the uh, account managers, and then there are also front desk involved in doing the administrative work to make all the things, make all the wheels go round. We have key risks. Who's here from Keyring? Jonathan and Gunnar. Um, is anybody here from front desk? I can't remember if I was expecting anyone. No. Um, so the keyring maintainers um, uh, put the keys in and out of the keyring as we as we need them to. And then we have um, Debian maintainers. Um, are you here? Any Debian maintainers? Not developers, just maintainers. One. Okay. One or two. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the term, the Debian maintainer is, has limited upload rights on some packages. So they're not a Debian member um, as, uh, in the formal sense. There's no voting rights or, um, or, or, um, uh, or archive-wide access, but you can have limited rights. And the intention is that you can get used to doing some uploads with some packages, build up some history, and then perhaps become a DD later on. Um, then we have Debian developers who are full members. And they can be uploading. But for some years now, we have also had non-uploading developers. The only difference is that uploading developers can upload things and non-uploading developers cannot upload things. It's, it is as straightforward as that. So a DDNU, as we call them, um, has all the voting and uh, delegation rights and so on that, uh, that an uploading developer does. Um, so so do we have non-uploading developers at all? Handy. And uploading developers? And if I haven't caught you yet, who did I miss out? <laughs> oh, oh, OK. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm not as ill as I thought. You haven't listed AMs. Sorry? You haven't listed AMs. Application managers are Debian developers who have some experience in the project and who um, take an applicant and guide them through the new maintainers process and decide whether they think that they were going to recommend them to become a Debian developer and then report back to the account managers. And then finally, we have contributors who is everybody else who's not involved. Because if you're contributing to, develop, to Debian, you are by de facto a Debian contributor. So uh, we would normally expect that you're a contributor for a little while, and then, you're, and then when you decide you want to join the project formally, you're an applicant for a little while, and you might go on to become one of the, one of the three um, uh, categories of member that we have. Um, if you have been a Debian developer for a little while, then either you will volunteer or I might hunt you down and say, you want to be an application manager, don't you? Because I have a queue and I always have a queue. So if you are sat in here and you're a DD and you have been for more than about three days and you'd like to be an application manager, please come and talk to me because there is a queue, as there always is. All of these processes are now handled by the um, nm.debian.org um, uh, uh, database and website that goes with it. So um, 
Debian maintainers has for, for some years has been handled by Annabelle almost exclusively, but it's always been a long-term goal to fold that into the rest of the processes, and that's now complete. Um, so if you, have, if you are used to the NM website, you'll find that there are new style processes um, and the old style ones that are in progress will be completed, but then they'll be archived. Um, new style processes take lots of the work out for you because you don't need to do the SC and DMUP agreement anymore. You don't need to get a declaration of intent from your applicant. You don't need to get their login name and you don't need to get their forwarding address and you don't need to make sure that they've got a biography because the website will enforce all of this before they even reach you. So, um, so if you're an AM or if you're thinking about being an AM but think that sounds like an awful lot of, um, of desk work, uh, we, we took it all away, it's fine, you don't have to do any of that anymore. Um, new style processes are much quicker to take place um, in the few that we've, that we've been doing because the administrative work is already out of the way. So as an application manager, what I'm looking for when you, when you recommend or, or don't an applicant um, is that you can find sufficient evidence in the archive or in their, or in their um, social work that they're doing good work and they're doing it consistently and they're a good social fit. And if all those boxes are true, then there's very little you need to, you, need to, um, uh, you, you should find that you're needing to discuss with them. You should be able to find most of that activity already. Um, if, if there isn't evidence like that in the archive, that's probably an indication that they're not ready to be a full uh, developer yet. Mm. Uh, so new, pro new style processes are, lo are lovely, and if, and, and if you're applying in the future, you will be on a new style process. There's only a handful of, of old ones still left to run. Uh, there is one exception to this, which is collabmate access, which is still um, a manual process because it, automating it probably involves screen scraping, fusion forge, and, and nobody's really felt very enthusiastic about that to date. Um, and it's probably dangerous as well. So we are still handling collabmate requests um, uh, uh, by hand. Um, signed mail to front desk, I am a Debian maintainer and I'd like to get to collabmate, or um, I am a DD, no, sorry, a DD has collabmate already. Um, or I am working with this person and I'd like them to have collabmate access and, um, and it'll be turned around. If you're feeling enthusiastic, we could do with some help with documenting all this because <coughs> documentation is not our strong point. Um, so um, updating some of the wiki pages which talk about old processes and talk about um, mailing front desk for lots of things and so on need tidying up. Um, documentation on the main website could do with um, harmonizing so that there are, there are places where we talk about three or four ways of doing things. Um, if you're an application manager at the moment, we could do with more people on front desk because there's a, there's a natural graduation from front desk to account manager, but then we don't really have many people coming through um, at, the, at the other end of that chain. Um, front desk is quite interesting. You'll meet, lots of, you'll meet um, many of the applicants who are coming through and you'll also get to know the developers who are working as, as AMs quite well. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting job that you do not need to make um, uh, judgment decisions about applicants. It's purely administrative, so you don't need to worry about um, um, having to have difficult conversations with people. Um, and um, at the end of the process, you check that all of the applicants' um, details are right and that their application is ready to be, to be reviewed, and, and, and that's about all. So if you fancy being a front desk member, please come and have a word with me. Um, and if you're a developer and you think that you might like to be an application manager, you're also very welcome to come and talk to me. Um, I could probably do with one or maybe two who um, are prepared to do non-uploading applications, um, which are, um, be because they're less technical, it's less easy to get a grind on what somebody's up to. So you get to know the applicant a little bit better with those. Um, and we could always do with new uploading um, um, AMs as well. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be exclusive to one or the other. I can feed you whichever you fancy doing next. Um, so, if you're in the process now, how are you finding it? Or perhaps I should rephrase that. Who's in the process now? One. How are you finding it? Um, I'm still in the old My, my phone. 
<laughs> I'm still in the old process. Um, yeah, I I hope for the new process because the old one was a bit complicated and yeah, such too much things around. I would have preferred to be in the new process of NM, but it works. <laughs> How long have you been in your process? Um, I. Applied officially in February. Okay. Nice. Had to wait a few months for my advocacies, and now we are just sorting out the rest. Nice. Good. February to June or July, um, getting your advocacies and getting into an application manager is is probably about the kind of queue we're at at the moment. Um, what I'm hoping um, and would and would like very much is that we can. Um, speed up the next part of that, which is working with your application manager and then making a recommendation. Yes. Um, I've completed the new process two weeks ago. Good. It took seven days and it was awesome. That's much more like what I want to hear. <laughs> Behind you. I'm in the old process and it has been eight months. So How I like... I'm on the old process and has been eight months. Can I like start again with a new one? <laughs> you might as well finish with the one you're in. But um, so to be clear, the 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 new star process gets lots of the administration um, more streamlined. But the time you spend with your application manager um, will will still depend on how much your involvement is already um, and how much time you have and they have. Um, I, ideally, a matter of weeks is good for that stage. Eight months, did you say, yeah. um, is getting on a bit. So um, let me know um, about the process and, and let's get some movement on it because we can probably, if it's been that long already, we can probably just get some boxes ticked and get you finished. For, for the old timers, uh, can you explain how the new process makes this so much faster? So yes. what, what's, what's the magic? behind the new process that makes it so fast? So I'm going to borrow, um, I'm going to borrow high voltage for this, but I'm sure he won't mind. And so here is the details that we need to collect for him in the advocacy's okay block. Um, sorry, in the requirements OK block. Uh, at the beginning, they're, of course, all not OK. And so the reason this is quicker for the application manager is that lots of this can be done by the applicant themselves. So the key consistency checks, for example, are done by the site as soon as you apply and you give it your key fingerprint and it says yes or no. So you don't need to run keycheck.sh anymore. You don't need to check the signatures on it because you can see it all straight there. The advocacies um, matter less as the AM, but as a front desk, um, what we were doing is, is keeping an eye out for the advocacies. And as they arrive, we mark them OK, and then they move on to the next step of the process. And again, these are automatic. Um, so as an advocate or an applicant, you don't generate mails and sign them anymore. You feed all the data straight into the NM site. Um, which makes it much more streamlined. The DMUP agreement, similarly, you, you, um, the applicant will be prompted for the text that needs to be written for the DMUP, and they sign it and feed it into the site, and the site checks the signature. So all of that administrivia happens before your applicant even gets assigned to you. So you can chop that whole section out of the, um, out of the template. Um, you can ask them again if you're, if you're feeling like you need to spend a bit more time with them, but... So application managers, how are you getting on? Have, have, uh, 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 who, who's here? Let's start with that. OK, three, four. Keep your hand up if you heard from your applicant in the last three months. OK, 
keep your hand up if you heard from your applicant in the last six weeks. Does kicking them in person at dev comps count? No. <laughs> <laughs> kicking them in person does not count um, because I can't see it. Uh, did you hear from them last week? Okay. Well, that's that's it was a sign for me that. <clears throat> <laughs> I finished the process yesterday. Okay, okay. I've timed this really badly. Um, that's quite good. I'm, I'm pleased about that because, because um, the process has a reputation of being tortuous for application managers and applicants. Um, and we're gradually shedding that reputation, but I still, I still see places where people say, oh, no, I'm not in the process because I've heard it's terrible and it takes three years and then I get nothing out of it in the end anyway. So uh, if I may say something on that, because I keep, or I have heard that before I applied to become a different developer, which is something like 10 years ago, um, and actually it really depends a lot on both the application manager and the applicant. Um, I've had an applicant who finished the old style process within three days, um, which means I got five, two mails per day from him with good answers. Uh, yes, it's possible. Yes. Uh, it really depends on both sides. So if one of the sites starts not uh, direct feedback, but let's lay mails wait for whatever, for two days, two weeks, two months, uh, you're dead. Mm. So that's the really important thing. If both sides really keep tracking it, it could go fast with the old style. Yeah. Um, but of course, as always, you get the bad news not from the one who is working fine, but from the other ones. So it would be nice if we could get rid of that saying it's, it's slow, but I'm not convinced that it really works by changing the process. But we need to tell the people it's important to keep on. It's important for the AMs. If they can't do it, they'll say something about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think one, one of the points that, I, that have taken long for me is uh, when, when it was not clear the person should be accepted. I mean, uh, the, the one time, I, uh, two times I rejected somebody. One time it took me several months for, well, for, for him to accept that he was not ready. And, uh, and well, I, I just deferred it, and it remained like an open process uh, to be reopened uh, for many years uh, until it was finally closed. So. Just, I mean, there had been cases where it's very difficult because in some, I mean, there are cases where it's easy. So if an applicant is perfect, you can just walk with them, them through all the things. Um, there are applicants, I learned more from the applicants than the applicant from me. So yeah, there are these cases, there are the cases where it's obviously they are not ready. If you just fly to front and say, forget it, uh, come back in half an year. So it's also easy. But those who are mostly ready, who are perhaps even ready on a technical level. So yes, I understand all of how Debian works technically, but you're pretty sure there will just be a total amo uh, uh, amount of, of uh, issues for the projects. It shouldn't be developers. These are the hard ones, they're ha really hard to deal with. Uh, and yeah, I, a few names directly came to my mind and it's, that's not an easy one. And I think this goes on all people nerves, so yeah. I'm more than happy in those cases. Um, I, the, the hard bit in those, I think, is, is working out how to say the, to the applicant, you're not really ready and I don't want to carry on with you and not make it feel like a rejection. Um, I'm quite happy um, for those cases to come back to front desk um, and, and we can, uh, the, the account managers can, can do the, the, the deferment, if you like, um, in, in your place if it's, a, if it's to, if it's becoming a problem to, to, um, to do the human side of it. But as you said before, you would like more account managers. I really would uh, recommend everyone who is account manager, if he has issues, just go to front this. I bet you sure you will help, help everyone. Uh, so if one is, uh, has an opinion, I don't know what to do now, don't, don't leave the mail in your inbox unanswered for two weeks. Just forward it to front this and say, please help me now. Is anybody thinking of applying? Oh, yeah. go on. Just need a mic. Can you add the button? Yeah. 
two rows that would decide him don't work well. Uh, yeah, um, sometimes it's actually also a little bit hard to, to decide uh, from, from the application manager side if the people are ready. So you have brilliant people, you know from the first May there will be a brilliant DD, hmm. and you have, uh, I never had this, you have that you have one which are clearly not ready, but you have also something in between which you say, yeah, I could work out. Uh, I think one thing which could be in use here is kind of uh, metrics or kind, kind of idea about uh, questions we ask, what we expect, hmm. so that hmm. we also maybe as application manager get some get around the same level what is acceptable or not so i'm not sure i am a especially hard am or not or i don't know <laughs> some guidelines for ams to decide if they are Uh, near the benchmark I'm scribbling yes. on here, which is a note to myself to come back to this at some point. Um, but yeah, um, the the question templates um, are quite useful for AMs, um, but of course uh, there's no corresponding answers because because I, what we don't want is for an applicant to just go snip the answers and uh, there you go, look, I'm an amazing DD. Um, so um, I wonder if some uh, some kind of indication of, what, of of those technical aspects for AMs only would be useful, and also some some kind of indication of what we're expecting socially, which which I think is more yeah, what, yeah. where where you mm. where where the where the difficulty is on those. Um, I think we. I'm thinking mostly PMP. Maybe can repeat that for the audio. I'm thinking mostly about the PMP section. The the policy and procedures parts. Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah, those are more the judgment, the the social judgment part. Mm -hmm. um, but the tasks and skills. It, because it's a technical thing, is is easier to evaluate in yeah. those zones. Um, yes, um, I'll come back to those. Um, is somebody in IRC? I can't see my window in this resolution, and I don't know what somebody just asked me. I have to do a comment from IRC now. Uh, for um, for uh, basically, uh, it has been suggested to say uh, it sounds like Fontes ought to be looking at applications that have been more than a month and ping is the application manager. Mm. Yes, and we found that when that can happen, that that's a um, pinging the application manager or the applicant um, at, at the same time can be enough just to nudge the process back into either either being coming back to front desk or or to finishing off um, the difficulty for us there is that we're currently struggling for front desk time and so that isn't happening because it's because it's, it's not um, so crucial so uh, having AMs progressing up to front desk would be a really really great thing at the moment Uh, and there's a, a link into the Debian wiki just appearing in the minutes that you probably might find useful for the. So it's called um, front desk slash AM tutorial. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure it will need some work, um, but maybe, uh, maybe your experience is valuable there as well. Okay, I take a look. I wasn't sure if you were going to say something or, <laughs> or, or wave it. <laughs> so, is anybody thinking of applying? Oh, good, okay. Thinking maybe not, maybe press ganged. Uh, um. <laughs> thinking maybe not, you just might get press ganged. <laughs> Was somebody, did somebody wave over that? Good, okay. Just expect them actively to do Yeah, so I'm very new to Debian, but it looks very interesting. And uh, I think 
I'm not experienced enough for that now. With a bit more experience, I hope to apply for this mm. and get through through the Good. process. Would you? Do you think you would want to take a technical track or a or a non-technical track? I'm sorry. Do you think you would want to take a technical um, view or um, or a non-technical? Um, I would like to help with translation because I'm not a native English speaker. Okay. But I would like to help with technical as well. Hmm. So. So the. I have a little question because I don't know the answer for that. So we have the uploading DDs and non-uploading DDs. Mm. Do you have a process to go from non-uploading to uploading DD? Have, have, have one case. It has happened. It's manual because because it happened when we weren't expecting it. So we haven't. Yeah, so it's up. possible. But, it, but it, yes, it's possible. And we to do. should. Advertise it more, mm. maybe. Gra graduating from um, um, DM to DD uh, is trivial, um, and that's self-service. Um, graduating from uh, non-uploading to uploading, yeah, in a second. Graduating from non-uploading to uploading is straightforward, but we but we do it manually. Um, what we currently can't cater for, um, but are going to need to find a way to soon, um, is people who are non-uploading DD. Because they don't, because they do do some technical work, but don't want to be able to access the whole archive, um, but do want to have DM on some packages so that they can upload just those, and uh, that breaks us at the moment completely. Um, so that if there is enough demand for that, then we, we 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 are going to need to find a way of automating that. At the moment, we can kind of do it with some fudging manually, um, but it's not very pretty in the database. I mean, anyways. It's obvious that there is some there needs to be some way from de for the developers to become uploading ones. So that's not a question. The other is really to read the process. I think the non-uploading is already a huge exception. Uh, so to make a huge exception and then a small step for that, I'm not sure if it really needs some automation or just shouldn't be handled manually as it had been the previous years. And I think we have seen that happening. So yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, at, at the moment, it, there's just not enough demand for it to do it right. automatically. Right. Manual so, is uh, fine uh, for now. To put some numbers to this, we have uh, 18 non-uploading developers, 800 uh, uploading developers. So if one of them wants to bother us, it <laughs> doesn't uh, add much overhead. No. Yeah, actually, my question wasn't uh, about the technical side. Uh, just to say, people, that it's not written. I mean, in the stone, that you can still change your access later in the future, which is was not very clear for me if it was the case or not. That's all. Yeah. But basically, if somebody says, "I'm not sure if I'm already, let's say, technical enough to become a developer," my real recommendation is choose something to work where you can commit or where you can help. For example, committing patches, committing translations which just doesn't need to be anything in the archive if you have the right uh, access rights to git archives, um, do something like Debian ma uh, maintainer, where you could take care of packages. Uh, and after you have done that a bit, you are more familiar with Debian, you are more familiar with the procedures, you, uh, you also could easy, more easily show that you have done useful work. So, so if you have done lots of good patches, uh, anybody will say, oh yeah, obviously he has done good things for two or three years for the packages, so we know it works, so it's much easier. So if you're unsure, just start working on it and don't think too much about procedures. Procedures will follow if you do done good work. And you know of at least one case where somebody became a developer, uploading developer, without having ever maintained a package. Hmm. Because he has shown that he actually has the skills, does it, so yes, that works. The, the, tr the key to short applications that we just get over and done with is that your AM can just go can have a look at you have a look at the work that you've already got in the in the archive or in translations or or wherever and go tick 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 and ask a couple of questions for the missing bits done. Um, that's the gold standard that we that we're after. Um, the the reputation um, is probably fair in lots of cases because it, it's easy for that to get run into the sand when it's somebody who isn't quite got that history to go and have a look at. Um, but it, it, is, it is getting better, I promise. Uh, so I've scribbled on the minutes that we should probably be advertising those pathways better, um, uh, like um, getting from non-uploading to uploading. Um, 
but uh, we could do with somebody to write documentation for that. So if you fancy writing some pages for Debian org, that would be amazing. Um, may I ask a question? Uh, translation has been mentioned once or twice, I think. Uh, in, in just as an example, in my case, I'm uh, interested in getting GNU cache translated, and I looked around, and it seemed like you have to download the code and co and do your translation file, and then compile it, and and that is not what I'm interested in. I just want the file that's translated, and somehow plug it in my copy and get it running. Uh, I I'm, I don't mind forwarding the file somewhere, but the point is, how how does this fit in? Um, so that's a little outside where I'm, where I'm normally working, but I have touched it in the past. So this may not be up to date, but um, in the in in the past, in some cases, um, there there were um, a, a set of mailing lists for the languages, and as developers need translations taking place, they can they will mail the the right file to the mailing list, and the translators can do what they need to and send the file back again. Um, so it, it should be more streamlined than, than you're describing, um, and I'm sure it is. Um, the, I'm not the best person to help you with it at the moment, the translation team I can put you in touch with. If I could add something to this, uh, I'm new to Debian, but uh, I worked with Android in the past. There's this online service called Crowdin. So Android applications have also have their transitions in one single file. So what a developer can do is just upload all the files to that service, and people can just go sign up and just edit directly. And the developer is the one who is responsible for getting the transitions updated. So if there is some FOSS alternative, or if that is FOSS, or if there is some FOSS service like that, which could be set up, then transition would be as easy as just signing up and entering the strings. So what you should do at this point is go and talk to the translation teams and find out if what they do at the moment is what you think is a great way of doing it, and if not, help them change it. Yeah. There's no translation inside it. There's no translation effort sort of steered by Debian. Um, there are translation teams doing that work within Debian, um, but I, this is mm, somewhat removed from where I'm normally working, so they're, they're the best people to talk to about it. Let's say basically, you're an English speaker. Basically, basically there's, there's, a, well, there's a difference between Debian and other projects in that regard. I mean, Debian has not a single, let's say, source code archive where everything is kept. People are using Git these days a lot. Uh, we used to have subversion a lot, but basically every developer is free or every maintainer of a package is free to do it as it fits. Same is with translations. So there are a bit of translation teams where things are centralized. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the, the big ones like uh, like KDE or GNOME have their ways to, to deal with it, but they also had, have already a lot of upstream translations, so they don't need to do as much as that. For the smaller ones, it's really different, and translation is, is, is definitely one of the parts where we could get or could do things better. Um, so. For the moment, it's just it's working as go, uh, good enough that people are not upset enough that they're going to improve it. Uh, which now could be something good because it's working good enough, and something bad because we're not improving it. Uh, so, but if somebody is really willing to do it and speak with uh, local uh, localization teams, I think that, that is an area of Debian that also could need more help, mm -hmm. but doesn't need it uh, bad, uh, or badly enough that, uh, that now one of the persons who is helping wherever it's, just, it's burning is doing that. But of course, I'm pretty sure any of us, uh, of us here will be happy to help you finding ways into the team or finding people to do that. But yeah, that's something else in helping to f find people or doing it ourselves. So if you want to do that, or have more interest in that, please speak to us and we will try to find people you could speak with. Um, how are we doing for time? Hey, okay. Four minutes. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, well. Seven minutes, I'm <coughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, mic, please. Yeah. 
Please be nice. I'm always nice. So how many AMs do we have at the moment? Some. <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm... Uh, yes, you can probably do it quicker than I can on this machine. Um, we have sufficient that at times we manage to not have a queue for a very brief period. But, um, so? It has, yes. Occasionally. Um, what, we, what we find is that we get bursts of applications around some key times, like after this week is always a busy one, and then there's a couple of other conferences around, and GSOC <coughs> results in applications. So, so um, in the quiet periods, we can chew through people quite quickly, and we almost get back to equilibrium, but um, then there is always a burst of applications that comes out with a queue. There um, are 26 people who have a, a max applicant of at least one. There are 26 listed application maintainers who have a max applicant of at least one. Um, so. um, my queue depth at the moment is currently six, I think. Um, so those people are in the process um, and have done the paperwork they need to to get to being assigned somebody, but are then just waiting. Th there are five slots available. It may not take account of the difference between you and old star processes. Um, I'm, I'm currently not occupied, and apart from that, I don't think there are any other spots. How much of a difference uh, is there if you're applying as a non-uploading DD and uh, uploading DD? I mean, I'm actually looking for documentation about non-uploading DD, if one were to go for that. So, every, a, apart from CollabMate, which is special, um, everybody goes through the same beginning process, which is you need to have an Alioth account because that's um, so that's the, the, the you know the, where um, the collab main um, comes from. Um, that's how we tie all your bits together with some identity because email addresses didn't work very well. Um, with that, you go to here and there is an application page and you either choose to do <coughs> DM DDU DD and you. Uh, if you're a DM then you get an advocate to support your application and then there are four days for any objections to arrive and assuming that there aren't you go straight to keyring and you join the keyring. If you are a DDU you need to do the paperwork and the advocate and then there are four days um, for objections same as there are for DMs and then you are assigned an application manager and then you come back to DAMS DAMS will review the whole application and make a judgment call, and then you go to Keyring to be added. Uh, for a DD non-uploading, the process is exactly the same for a DD uploading. Um, the difference is in what your application manager will talk to you about. So um, we have a set of pre-formatted questions for both um, for, for uploading applications, which your AM will pick and choose from for the bits that they can't find evidence of in the archive. Um, for non-uploading, it's a little more fuzzy because there, there are so many areas you can be working in. So your application manager will probably say, show me some examples of where you've been working, and you can do that, and they can go and have a look. They can have a look at the ones that you haven't shown them and make sure that, that you're not just picking and choosing, um, and then they'll make the recommendation the same. So for DD, regardless of whether you're uploading or not uploading, the process is really very similar. Uh, everything starts with an Alioth account, and then you log, and then you sign up to <coughs> NM, and then when you start the process, you get to choose from from which strands you want to start, to, um, uh, uh, which pathway you want to start with. Just to point out, the um, final step for DDU and DDNU is DSA. It is. Um, once you hit keyring for DM, you can be added to DAG by any Debian developer. DDU, DDNU, you need DSA to create the account first. Yeah. And they're pretty quick about that. Yeah, they are. And we normally see um, the 
we normally see DSA create the actual accounts um, within hours or, or, or a day or so. Um, the keyring maintainers work in a batch, so there's sometimes a delay at that state. What, do you do monthlies or? Yeah, so, so yeah. the aim is that keyring will do an update at, at least once a month. Um, we we can occasionally be convinced to do one faster, but, but in general, once a month. Yeah. Is somebody in IRC? Yes. Would you mind relaying? Uh, there's a question about if the applicant can help the AM find the evidence. Yes. And, uh, and also then a, a follow-up going, would that involve giving away too much about the questions? Um, the questions are available if you go and look for them. So, so while you're waiting to be assigned an application manager, you might perhaps want to go have a look at what the questions are. There, there was another AM who I can't remember who it was who explained that they went through the process with their applicant pretty much in a day because the applicant had already downloaded all of the questions, worked out what the answers should be, and done all the research while they were waiting for their advocates to go through. Mm. So essentially they cut and paste all the answers in backwards and forwards and had it all done within a day of the actual getting the AM bit. Yeah. And, and, and the impression was it was fine because they'd done the research themselves, they could talk about it, that was all fine. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm fine with that approach as long as the, they aren't cut and paste from someone else's answers. Right, of course. I have suggested to some people that were thinking about becoming uh, DDs. Well, I, I have given them the address of the, this uh, repository with the questions for them to study, because it, it's a great uh, study guide. Mm -hmm. and, and, well, it's a good resource, and yes, as you say, if you already have it, well, it's easier for the, if, yeah. for the application manager to follow. Um, we do get suspicious if three applicants all come through with exactly the same answers, though. So uh, at least we don't be too blatant about it. Um, but uh, besides those, uh, yes, it's more than fine to say to your AM, look, here's the work I've been doing. Um, that, I don't have a problem there at all, because we have tools to find that, but they're not, th there are still places where you might be working where we, we, our tools don't show you up. Um, so it's, it's fine to say. Here's, here's some examples of my work. By the way, one of the, I mean, I, I was until last week uh, an in, inactive AM. I had uh, uh, processed people and stopped doing so for a long time. One of the reasons I went back to being an AM is that it, it, it helps developers uh, like keep in touch with the latest practices. As uh, people who are, who are getting in Debian are following usually the latest uh, trends. Mm. And well, I learned 10 years ago, it's <laughs> over 10 years ago. Yeah, I certainly find being an AM very rewarding. Mm. I think there are very few applicants I've had. In fact, I'm not sure there are any where I haven't learned something. And, and even you know, where we're on the same page, seeing someone else's viewpoint and the way they answer the questions, um, I find really interesting. So if, if you haven't considered being an AM and you've got some spare time, I would certainly look into it and process maybe a couple of people and see how you find it, because it, it is really. And also, it's really nice to, down the line, see those people contribute to Debian and go, I help get them in. I mean. Uh, some of my applicants are hundreds of times more active in Debian than I am, and I sort of feel a little bit of, oh, I had that happen. So how do I actually become an AM? Email um, front desk. Is that all it is? And okay. say, I would like to be an AM. Please sign your mail so right. that we don't Fair give enough. you an applicant, and then you say, what? I don't know anything about this. Because I was just looking through the site to see, to be able to push a button to say, make no, me an AM, no, and there isn't one. No not, a, no, not at the moment. Maybe I should do that. But otherwise, I'd have just done it. Um, no, e e email front desk, and we will give you one applicant to start with who's, who, who looks uncontroversial. Uh, not that we have many controversial ones. Um, <coughs> and at the end of the first one, we'll have a look in more detail with you and make sure that you were happy with all the bits and there weren't any queries and so on. And then, and then um, from then on, you set the number of slots to the amount of time you have, and if I've got someone, I'll fill a slot. Phil. The alternative way of doing it is to realise that you've been an AM since, since the year 2000 and nudge your number of <laughs> slots your slot up, up from not by zero, one, which yes. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that, that's also a good point. You, as an AM... Your you, numbers should just have gone up by one. As, as an AM, if you 
don't have time for applicants right now, you can set your slots to zero. And, and until you put them back to one again, you won't, you, will, you won't be bothered by us. So it's not a commitment in perpetuity to, to have a queue of people at your door. You can say, I, I, I don't have time at the moment. So I need to admit that at the time when I was working as AM, I found it more easy to process three applicants in parallel uh, at times and last times nobody because if I see in parallel, I'm pretty much sure I'm not just saying, oh yes, this one is whatever. I'm, it's easier to, to keep one on standards if I have a few in parallel. And then not to ask the applicants at all at other times, that was easier for me than having just one uh, in series. Other people might make it different, so just my own experience. Right, we should probably wrap up unless there is anything else. So um, I'm here until Saturday. I'm more than happy for you to grab me in the corridor and have a chat about any of this. Um, key ring maintainers are here all week if, you, if, if they can be of any use. I'm promising people your time without asking you. I'm all right with that. Um, uh, come and talk to us. Um, and the um, new member site has all of the contact information on if you want to get hold of us outside of the conference. Um, thank you for coming and, um, and being helpful and saving my throat somewhat.